Hello, and today I'm back with another video. This time I gave myself some bullet points that I wrote down. Uh, I said I might do a Bucks Hawks preview. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little bored. Today's a day off of work. So I'm just like, why not th throw something together real quick? So let's see, here's some bullet points I have down for the Bucks. Middleton probably will go off in this series. I'll elaborate more on that whenever I get to the Hawks points. Uh, let's see. Giannis will get Capella in foul trouble. Capella is really the one very good defender for Giannis that the Hawks have. And then after that, you have, you know, Gallinari and John Collins, who, I mean, they can defend him, but it's not gonna exactly be a good time. He get, you know, first of all, Gallinari, he could, he'd blow, he'd be able to blow by him every time he wanted to, most times. And then John Collins is a little more athletic, but he's not exactly known for his defense. <laughs> Let's see. Lopez will be a target. I mean, we all know. No, the drop coverage. Oh, again, I'll get a little bit more into that on in the Hawks points. Portis will also be a target. He can switch a little more, but if they're really trying to go to a switchy defense, then the I mean, if they're really trying to do that, then Bud will actually pull out the Giannis at center lines for once. Of course, still hasn't done it. Well. He's done it a little more, but he's still not, probably not doing it as much as he should. Let's see. They can get away with more Bren Forbes minutes. The Hawks wing defenders that they have now, uh, they're not the best. <laughs> and again, that's something I'll get more into with the Hawks bullet points, but you know, with. With the Bucks being able to get away with more Bryn Forbes minutes, maybe he can catch fire again. Another thing I have down is, will Connaughton keep up the good plus minus? In the net series, you know, uh, the best uh, plus minus lineup, of, like consistently every game, your, your five best players in terms of plus minus were like some combination of, you know, you'd have Middleton, Giannis, Tucker, and then... Connaughton would consistently show up at, as one of the five best. And then usually it would be Drew, but I guess there may be one or two games where Lopez popped in there with a better plus minus. But yeah, if, Con yeah, if Con can Connaughton can keep that up, that would, that would be really good for the Bucks. I mean, there was, game se there was game seven where, you know, he came in for a few minutes, so and was just going straight flamethrower with how high he was from three-point range. It, it was very fun to see in real time. You know, I guess a little, little uh, tangent uh, while watching that series. I honestly thought with, when Katie made that shot, first off, at first I thought it was a three, then when I saw it was a two, I was like, uh, but the Nets are going to win this in OT, aren't they? And then they go, it's like, how'd it go? I think they went up like two very early in overtime and then they didn't score again. And I was very surprised to see that. It's like, oh my God, the Bucks actually beat them. Like, you know, Giannis was gassed at certain points throughout the game, but he, but you know, he'd sit a few minutes and then he'd be like, okay, coach, I can go back in. And then just continue feasting. He he even made like seven of his last eight free throws, which was which was a pleasant surprise. But anyway, that was it with the Bucks points. On to the Hawks, and the Bucks point with Milton will probably go off. Coincides with DeAndre Hunter's absence will be felt. I mean, yeah, he was missed whenever he went out and in the Sixer series, but you know, they were able to relatively get away with it because you know, while Seth Curry was going off, 
It's Seth Curry, and you know, Ben Simmons pulled an all time, what are you doing? You know, he, he just, he was playing good defense on Trey, but then on the other end, he was just a black hole. That That's the only way I could put it. I mean, we, we've all seen that free layup dunk that he passed on. Eh. And it's just, if your confidence is that shot, what are you doing, man? Anyway, back, back on track. I could make another video going off on, on that series and on Doc Rivers, but anyway. Drew will have Trey on the struggle bus. Now, here's what I mean by that. Okay, Trey's going to still have good numbers. He's Trey Young. But his efficiency is going to be down a little, you know. He'll probably commit a few more turnovers than he usually does. And again, just overall, there's a reason Drew Holiday has the reputation on defense he does. I know. We really, we really traded for Eric Bledsoe. And we could have kept George Hill instead. Anyway, again, I could make a whole other video on that. Next point. I trust McMillan over Bud. And I will say that with a straight face. I mean, I know before this season with the Hawks, you know, his teams haven't exactly done that well in the playoffs. I mean, look at the talent he's had on the other teams compared to what he has with the Hawks. I mean, you know, missing Bogdanovich, have I? Yeah, that's a point I'll, I'll get to him. Bogdanovich, when he was healthy, was quite the second option. I mean, again, I have flashbacks to the bubble last year whenever we, whenever my Pelicans were playing the Kings who had Bogdanovich and he was just getting every three point shot he wanted, especially in the first half. That was, that was pain. That was pain to watch. But yeah, you know, there was Bogdanovich. I mean, uh, Capella has provided good defense in the playoffs I mean other than you know other than oh my good Joel Embiid he was still going off but oh but overall Capella had his moments and then in the Knicks series you know there was uh who was it? Taj Gibson and Nerland's Noel were you know or were kind of orbiting in the dunker spot and so anytime that uh Julius Randle would try to get to the basket, Capella could come over and be like, what are you doing here? Anyway, yeah, I, I think I've already said this. If Lopez continues to play expended, extended minutes, Trey's floater is there all day. I mean, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, we saw against Joel Embiid's drop coverage that Trey was getting that all day. I mean, he did struggle in game seven, obviously, but then... Well, that, well, what happened coincides with my next point, but again, oh my goodness, Budenholzer will have to be a little, you know, quick trigger with, with the Giannis at center minutes in this series. If Lo, if Lopez is just allowing floaters all day, of course, if again, there's a reason why it goes back to, I trust McMillan over Bud. There's a reason for that. <laughs> I don't know how quick he'll be with that. But again, next next point is with Bogey's injury, obviously Bogdanovich, uh, Herter will have to step up. In game seven, Kevin Herter was huge for the Hawks. You know, Bogdanovich is, you know, dealing with the injury. You know, Trey Young, did he even play? I don't think he even played in game seven. I don't have the box score in front of me. But yeah, Trey Young was just, he was on the struggle bus in game seven. I mean, I'm sure you all saw that, but Kevin Herter just said, you know what? If Trey won't do it, I got this. <laughs> Make, making Van Pelt proud <laughs> to, of his fellow Terrapin. But yeah, he, He's going to have to play a big part if the Hawks are going to have a chance. Now, another th if 
fact, another thing that was big in game seven of the Philadelphia versus Atlanta game. Game seven of Philly versus Atlanta. A big thing was a lot of Trey Young, Lou Williams minutes. You know, because again, the Bogdanovich injury. If there's more consistent uh, Trey and Lou Will minutes, Bucks, they're going to exploit that. I mean, they just have the personnel to do so. You know, set the 76ers couldn't quite do it, you know, mostly because they just would not consistently play, you know, minutes with Seth Curry and either one of Maxi or Milton when, you know, one of those probably should have been in late game instead of Ben Simmons. But anyway, all that to say, my pick is the Bucks in six games and they really should finish it off in less than six games. I wouldn't be surprised to see them finish it off in five, but again, this is a Mike Budenholder Bucks team. It's not gonna be that simple. You know, first off, they'll go cold at least one of the games. I mean, game even in game one against Miami, even though they won, you know, that was the game where they went cold and Miami got hot and they still won the game and then went on to sweep the series. You know, get, game two against the Nets, you know, I think we all want to collectively forget that mess. Uh and then the Hawks are going to catch fire in another game because, I mean, Budenholzer is going to be, what's the word, stubborn about the drop coverage. And he's going to be insistent on playing Brooke Lopez extend, extended minutes probably more than he should. But I, but I don't think that the Hawks have quite enough outside of Trey Young with all these injuries to exploit it, you know, the way that would be needed, you know, to win the series. Also, uh, Drew Holiday, my guy, please start going to the basket some more. Let Chris Middleton be the guy who's the star taking threes. He's the best three-point shooter um, among your big three by far, okay? You know, let let him be your three-level scorer, and Drew, you focus on, you know, getting in the paint. I know Giannis needs to get in the paint as well, but he can get, look, with the matchups he has, he can get that pretty much whenever he wants. I mean, okay, Capella, it'll be a little tougher, but he can get him in some foul trouble. But Drew, you just focus on put pressure on the defense at the rim, and then once they have to respect that, you know, more than what the Nets did, once they have to like truly respect that, then, you know, you'll open things up for Tucker, for Lopez when he's spotting up, for Connaughton, for Bryn Ford, Chris Middleton when he's playing off the ball. But anyway, yeah, I'm picking Bucks and six. If this is if the Hawks win again in seven, then you can at me. But they like they real they really just got to the conference finals on the backs of Ben Simmons being like, yeah, I'm just gonna stand here on offense and just hope I play good enough defense on Trey Young. And what do you know, the Doc Rivers effect also came in again. Okay, I'm going to cut it off here because I I probably should make a whole separate video on that with how much I'm going into tangent on that. Going into a tangent on that. My goodness. <laughs> Peace.